but just to clarify, we're not a monitor farm, we're a demonstration farm, so similar to the previous presentation that you saw um, before. And um, we are running a field day that will um, introduce the year two results. This is um, focusing on mostly the year one results. And um, the demonstration farm project is about um, beef and lamb supporting farmers to give something new a try and then uh, enabling us to transfer that knowledge on to the um, other farmers today and at field days and through other, other means. <coughs> so um, our project was called um, Plus Three Tonne with Legumes and it started in um, spring 2007 and we initiated the trial because we felt our high country was lacking legumes and had been hit a bit by the clover root weevil and challenging climatic conditions and we just weren't getting the performance that we'd like to see. And we had introduced quite a lot of legume dominant passes on our cultivator and bull land and saw the value it was having to our farm system. And we wanted to find a technique that could withstand summer dry conditions. So we know there's, there's a lot of spray and pray techniques and that kind of stuff, but um, we weren't having much success with those, so we wanted to find something that um, worked for us. So we set out to achieve basically more legumes, um, and we wanted to focus on actually utilising our existing clover rather than trying to um, focus on introducing new species in the first instance, utilising what was there. So something like that was, was the ultimate. Um, the team that we've put together in this project farm, um, project farm, um, there's Hamish and myself and then Sarah um, from Beef and Lamb New Zealand and Mike Williams from the Farmer Council and then we've had Ray Moss from Ag Research has been invaluable with his, the management of the trial of recording and measuring the information, Rangi Holland from Ravensdown and then Dick Arnst who's um, provided um, agronomy advice and they've been really supportive in helping us try things, put us outside our comfort zone and supporting us. So just a bit of a rundown of the farm. This is our area, um, so we're just on the eastern side of Big Peninsula. This is our cultivatable area that we'd introduced a lot of new species, and this is our um, improved till country, and our trial is up here. And so this is the land class that we're trying to target um, in this kind of um, project. This is a trial site up here, so this is looking out north to Kaikoura, um, and this is a fe the fenced off area where we've got the, the trials. In year one, um, it was about deciding on the spray treatments, conducting the spray program, deciding on some seeding op options, applying seed, and then measuring and monitoring. And um, just before we go into the detail of the options, so um, we went through um, all the different type of options we could have tried and narrowed it down to three, and it was looking at a light chemical top, and that was just about tickling up the grass and hoping that would be an opportunity for the clover to flourish. Um, the second option was a heavy chemical top, so we really wanted to knock out that, um, those grasses and see what would happen with the clover, um, and also knocking out the clover and trying to introduce something new in there. And then the third option was a grass eradication, so that was about um, knocking out the grass and giving the clover a real opportunity to thrive. So <clears throat> the light chemical top uh, was sprayed with 250 mils of glyphosate in the spring. Um, that probably didn't really have the desired result that we wanted, it didn't really knock it around enough. So we split the trial uh, into three with, in the autumn and um, with one trial going to no second spray, the second one a respray, we upped the rate to two litres of glyphosate and and same with the um, third one, and we introduced some seed to the third trial. Right, you, can see, you can see here uh, some of the results that occurred after the spray. So with the light one, it didn't take out much, and with the, with the two litres in the autumn, it, it basically knocked everything out, and that's one thing we found with glyphosate was that the results were very unpredictable, depending on the on the time of the year and also even um, the time of the day, it can have quite an influence on what happens. So even the two litres that shouldn't have taken out the clover, we were hoping to maintain the clover, it just an annihilated everything. Sorry, Holmes, can I just ask a question to that? <coughs> What's the ideal conditions for spraying? <laughs> Probably asking the wrong person. I mean, that's, that, that is really a variable. I mean, like, like I said, the, the two leads were advised that should leave all the clover and 
they were very surprised and took it out. Um, like was there, was there moisture in the air or was it a really hot, dry day? I mean, was there anything? Uh, it was pretty dry and hot at that time of those, all those sprays. Yeah. At, at what a lot of other people mentioned um, in the autumn that they found the same thing, spraying out barley grass with very low rates and it took out all their rye grass at the same time, I'm sure, so it's a bit unexplained. Uh, the second treatment was a he heavy chemical top. This was to align ourselves with the P21, um, which AgriSearch were undertaking. So we applied four litres of glyphosate <coughs> in the spring. And then in the autumn, we also split those trials up to a, a no second spray with a legume mix and a respray of four litres with the same legume mix. And then the same again for the, the last two with um, a different legume mix, which I'll show you in a minute. So you can also see some of the results there. The clover did come back quite nicely after the spring spring spraying here, even though it looks pretty bare. Uh, it came back, you can see here, that's what it came back in like in the autumn. And, and that's what happened when we re-sprayed it in the autumn. And the third treatment was grass eradication. Um, this is a Valiant product, which is the same as Galant, designed just to take out the grass. So that had a really positive response. It took out all the um, <coughs> poorer grass species and the rye grass came back. This was at uh, 500 mils, half a litre to the hectare. And left us in the autumn with, whoops, sorry, um, a lot of legume in the sward. So we decided that there was no need to respray that in the autumn and we just applied the seed mixes, onto, split it up in three and applied the seed mixes on two of them. So the seed mixes we went with were a legume grass mix over on the left. Um, a P21 mix to align it with the other treatments done around New Zealand, so we can look at the results from that. And a, a legume grass mix over here. So that one should, yeah, that's right. So those are all applied to those treatments. So the early results from November to <coughs> mid October last year showing us that we're still the control is still out producing on a total herbage mass compared to the others um, the grass eradication is what is uh, getting up there and but we're still struggling to get up to where the control is currently but if you look at the herbage grown last spring you can see that the other treatments have surpassed what the control is doing. <coughs> and if you look at the legume content, um, in the control down here and the, and the light chemical top, uh, we're, we're struggling to get above 10% legume, down as low as 4% at times, whereas the other ones have jumped up in between so 30 and 40 percent. Um, in the grass eradication one, we did put um, some balance of clover, and that struck very well. There wasn't a lot of other clover, so <coughs> some of that um, clover content you'll see there will be the annual balance of clover coming through. So if we look at the past composition, this is pretty busy, but two main things really points to come out of this uh, a the, the legume content in here particularly the grass eradication ones has jumped right up compared to where we were back in the control of four percent um, the weed grasses are very high back in the controls and the light chemical top we've managed to reduce those although they have where, where the sprays um, took out the glyphosate <coughs> took out all the competition they have come back stronger in the, in the grass eradication. And also the weeds, 
Um, a, main, a major component of the weeds in the grass eradication was actually yarrow. Now we were a bit concerned about this and we tried to find a spray to kill it. But Tom Fraser assures me that at the same time as they were releasing plantain and chicory, they were trying to release yarrow to fatten lambs on. So he said, don't worry about it. It's pretty good stuff. So pasture quality over the spring. Um, the control earlier on was sitting pretty much the same as the grass eradication in early spring. But once we got into the later spring, we saw the control drop off. Now this result actually came back at seven and a half, but I got told that that couldn't quite be possible. So I actually bumped it up a bit. So, um, <laughs> but there's quite, a, there's quite a big difference in quality and you'll see some pictures coming up um, here. You can see here the control, the control one, a lot of seed head and stalk in it. Where over here in the valiant one, you've got a lot of clover dominance and, and you can see the yarrow there also. Uh, expenses of the treatment, we're looking at $90 for the chemical per hectare, aerial application of $100, so giving us a total cost of $190 a hectare. There's the seed application, um, we, we didn't, in the in this treatment we didn't see any real strike of new seed, it was basically a waste of time applying seed. Um, all the clover was resident clover and grass. Um, so now we're on to year two of the, the program and we were pretty excited by the initial results that we got from the, the, the trial pot and gave us the confidence to go forth with the Valiant treatment on a larger scale. So this year we're continuing to measure and monitor those existing small plots to see what the persistence is and what's happening with them over the course of one or two years and whether the, the treatment is a one-off treatment that you need to do or whether you need to do a follow-up um, in a couple of years time just to see what the progress is with there. And um, we've also decided to um, look at a valiant rate trial. So uh, recommendation was um, 500 mils per hectare of the valiant. And we wanted to know whether we could reduce the cost of the treatment by lowering the valiant rate and still getting the same results. So we've got a bit of a trial going on at halving the rate um, and, and a bit lower to see whether we can reduce the, um, that cost of $90 per hectare. And then um, we've also decided to scale up the project um, to a larger scale. So we've um, picked another area of the property with similar, um, similar um, cultivatable and gone with five hectares. So this was done in November last year. Um, we were in a pretty tight feed pinch. It was pretty dry. So um, it was a bit of a, um, a hard decision to make to take out some of that feed, but we're seeing some pretty um, good results already. This picture doesn't really um, give it justice, but there's a there's a faint sort of line down here. Um, and by doing the valiant treatment, we've knocked out, you can see a lot of the seed head emergence there. And this is basically um, uh, ryegrass and, and clover. And um, when the animals are grazing, they're going straight for that feed. They're pretty happy to be eating that. So um, keeping an eye on what's happening there. Uh, and just finally, our learnings to date. Um, the treated pasture is preferentially grazed by animals, so they're liking that legume, that high quality pasture, so they're, they're having a good time eating that. Uh, look, it appears that the introduced seed has had limited impact so far. We are dealing with quite a batch in um, the pasture, so um, we're talking about whether we need to, to wait another season to allow a better seed bed for that um, seed application. That's sort of a work in progress still. Um, we believe this is a cost effective way of improving um, our pasture quality. Initial, um, initial workings that we've done um, and looking at um, the results in the year two, it's looking like a payback of within 16 months and that's under what we'd call some challenging climatic conditions, a lot of moisture stress over the summer and in autumn. So um, if that can work in that year, we're pretty confident that it could only do better with um, more um, moisture. Um, and so yeah, reliable method even in challenging um, climatic conditions. So um, just as in a final 
there, um, we will be having an on-farm field day in November, um, so we hope to have also um, sprayed out another area on the property as well to show you um, what it's like um, in actions with being sprayed out as well. And just one more thing, we're, we're currently looking at how we, um, where there's an opportunity to put new rhizobia into that country and so we're getting some tests done to see what is there and whether there's, what methods there are to um, getting that onto the ground as cheap as possible. Thank you. Well, we'll take, we've got a few moments for any questions for anyone, from anyone. Just on that one, given the history, you haven't used inoculated clover in your establishment. Uh, there was inoculated clover used on some of those some of those reps, yeah, and we have also used a kilo on that big trial site over half it, but but we're just trying to work getting some tests done through Ag Research just to see what um, rhizobia is there and whether there's an opportunity to introduce it and how we can do that. What pH is what phosphate they want to be putting on there? The pH is probably five six and. The phosphate levels would be late teens, sort of 18, 19. <coughs> um, assuming it all works well, um, what part of what percentage of the farm do you expect to maybe do that in you know, the sort of process in the future? What? Well, oh, I mean, I think you could probably do it over most of your whole country. Is that what you mean? Mm. Yeah. So I, I guess you'd just take out 10 or 20 hectares a year and work your, work your way around your whole country. We've been talking about where we go next with how we implement this um, throughout the property and we almost feel like you need to be treating it as a crop. So taking out um, a certain hectare area and then giving it a rest so you can actually give that clover a good chance and treating it like a cropping, cropping system on your whole country. So I mean that area, I mean Wayne who's out here is gonna to talk to us um, he did some work and by taking it, lifting the ME by one, you can take it from sort of returning 10 <laughs> cents a kilogram up to 20 cents a kilogram. So I guess the challenge is how we take it from perhaps breeding up to a finishing country and get that return. So one more question. Just, um, you talk about the triggers are for determining when to spray the, um, the areas. Uh, at the moment it's feed supply, which has been quite tight, but we've been advised by Dick Arts that we should be going a lot earlier, perhaps in October rather than late November when we have been, so we've got that feed for that weaning time, because it hasn't really been ready until sort of early January otherwise. But really, it hasn't shown any difference when you spray up that product. Just take one more, last one. And the trial site we did, and the big, the big site, no, was certainly limiting. So you think if you had any moisture in the soil in the spring, you would have had moisture in the middle? Yeah. And you might have put this on the ground or something. In terms of the trial site. Uh, the tr there was no reason f um, for the trial site why the seed shouldn't have struck. That, that got good rains after we applied the seed. I mean, we can't blame the climatic conditions on that. Excellent. Well, there's a good number of questions there, so no doubt we can expect good, a good number of people to go along to the, the, the field day coming up. So thanks very much to Hamish and Annabelle. We do appreciate the efforts on behalf of us all to learn. And I'll just